um, out near Mount Si, near North Bend, Washington. And I'm gonna set up and do a quick oil painting. Here's a scene I'm thinking of painting. Beautiful Mount Si. Over the, I think this is the Middle Fork Snoqualmie River. The sun's pretty bright today. It's really bright out here. Um, and it's kind of flattening things out because it's midday. I was hoping for a little more snow on the mountain, but that's okay. There's a little up there, and I may exaggerate what's there a little bit as well just to make it more interesting. This is the Three Forks Natural Area. Pretty little area to hike around. We've gotten a lot of rain and snow melt here recently. Beautiful midwinter day here right now, but a lot of evidence of recent flooding in this area. Pretty muddy, lots of trees knocked over. bunch of rain and snow recently so the trails here are pretty rough. Lots of trees down, lots of scrub and mud spilled into the trail but still pretty passable. At least it's not flooded at the moment while I'm here. The river is really high. Just wear good waterproof shoes. Lots of blackberries through here. Ah, damn it. Primed linen panel. This is a Centurion. I think they call it a DPL or an old OPL for oil primed linen. Nice surface, pretty inexpensive. Got a bunch on sale from Jerry's Artorama over the holidays. Go with a little bit of a limited palette today. I'll start out with Artist Turpentine for the Turpentine Wash. I don't have my white out yet. I'll get that out after I do the Turpentine Wash. Got Ivory Black, Rembrandt Cold Gray, Cerulean Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Transparent Oxide Brown, Burnt Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, Cad Red, Cad Yellow, and Windsor Lemon. So I don't have Yellow Ochre, Sap Green, Cobalt Blue, Thalo Blue. I don't think I'll need those colors today. It's kind of mute, muted winter colors right now. There's some greens, but the greens are all really muted. I can achieve those with the blues and yellows I have out. I'll start out with this small bristle brush and just sketching a composition. Go with a landscape layout. I think I'll put the base of the mountain on this one third line and I'll try to put the snow covered peaks near this intersection of one third lines. So the mountain's going to kind of come up in here and then swoop down probably off the panel. I want to catch the majority of the mountain, but I don't mind if, it, if it's not all there. Um, over here I'll have some of these tall deciduous trees, and then I'll have the river make something of a path down in the bottom. And maybe this nice calm pool reflecting part of the mountain down here. I'll use Artist Turpentine for this initial sketch and for the turpentine wash, and then I'll put it away. I don't like having the turpentine open. The fumes can make me kind of woozy, or certainly not good for you to, to breathe them. So I'll put it away and get the Gamsol out and use Liquin 
um, for mixing the colors and for painting. It's pretty warm in the sun here, even though it's January, it's um, pretty warm today, a little break in the cold weather. The wind and the cold are supposed to pick up a little bit later today. Try to get rid of this visitor without hurting it or letting it get into my paint. Come on, little guy. So I'll just do a rough sketch up in the sky to sketch the top of the mountain. I'll go with ultramarine blue. I want to make sure I place that prominent peak first so that I can kind of go from there and then draw the other peaks in relation to that prominent peak. Beautiful snow covered peak back here. It's got a nice, very high value purple, almost a pastel purple value to it. And I think I'll copy that snow color um, and just imagine there's more of that snow color, color on the mountain. I'm not really bothering with placing the iPhone next to my palette on this one. I'm just going to go kind of quick. I don't have a lot of time. I need to get over to Kirkland to the Park Lane Gallery and deliver some paintings for a show. If you're interested, please sign up for my newsletter on my website. I'll give the details of the show there. As I do the initial sketch, I'm trying to capture the key things that interest me in the scene. In this case, the tallness of the mountain, its grand rock faces, the calm pool in the river reflecting the trees and the mountain, and the dull winter browns and greens. Switch to a little bit of burnt sienna for the sketch down toward the bottom for the river. Kind of a lovely old log, a fallen log here. I like the shape of. mimic that in the water, give it a nice reflection. I'm trying to avoid repeating shapes and sizes. I see that the ridge lines in the mountain are very symmetrical, so I need to try to adjust the shapes a bit so that it's not just a pattern of parallel lines. already I want to creep the mountain up just a little higher. It looks a little squat in what I've drawn right now. Add yeah, just a little bit of alizarin and crimson too. Start adding some color, some red to the, the scene. I'm just going to bump everything up a little bit.
better. I like that better already. Turpentine wash. I'll use my normal large flat bristle brush. Use mostly turpentine with just a little bit of pigment added. So for the sky I'm just going to wash in a mix of ultramarine blue and cerulean blue. A little darker, a little more ultramarine toward the top of the sky. A little lighter, a little more cerulean toward the horizon. And I'll adjust the drawing a little bit as I do this wash. totally fine if the sketch colors, this burnt sienna, get into the wash. I can go back over that with the true colors if I need to. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this burnt sienna and just dab in some of these trees that are going up into the sky. Nice random effect that will get partially washed out as I do the rest of the wash. Someone's flying a drone around. For the mountain, I'll use a mix of alizarin crimson and cerulean blue. Gives it a nice grayed out effect. Just kind of block it in for now, especially the shadows I see, the prominent shadows. I'm constantly experimenting with how much and which colors to use in the initial turpentine wash. I really enjoy that phase of the painting. It leads me to be more abstract and to deviate from what's right in front of me. I don't want to start the same way every time. I want to allow for some surprises. I really enjoy doing the turpentine wash and it helps me to get started. It kills the white of the panel I like that glowing white to start with. I like starting on a white panel because I think it helps the transparent layers to really glow. In that initial wash I like to pick a color that I think might look good if I left it uncovered by later layers of paint. Especially if it's just little patches, little Tiny breaks in the final color showing that underpainting color. I think it can really be interesting. Hello. Hi. Beautiful day. Yeah, beautiful day out, isn't it? For the river, I want to keep it transparent and flat. So I'm using a really light wash here and with that bristle brush I can leave kind of that scratchiness. I think that transparency and scratchiness help to give the illusion of some depth in the water. Then if I come over that, that later with some thicker layers of paint that really bumps up the illusion. In that initial wash, I'm also establishing the shadow and value patterns. It may be hard to see in the video, but in person I can see the slight shifts. They act like markers for me, shadow patterns and composition marks that I can follow as I continue to paint. So as the shadows move across the mountain, I have that initial pattern I set up that I can refer to. 
it's up to me whether I stay with that pattern or if I change it. What, I'm, what I've done here is try to get the abstract nature of the wash to help me out. I'm trying to get it to bleed and move around, create interesting abstract shapes that I might be able to use later in the painting. So here I can draw the sun on the rocks and that'll help me as the light changes I'll still have this sun and shadow pattern that I can refer to just follow along as I paint the, the subsequent layers. I find that really helpful, especially on short winter days where the light's changing fast. So here I'll get out a little smaller evergreen, and with a little bit of turpentine I'm going to wipe out the lighter lights in the scene. Getting this smaller brush out just so I can do a little finer drawing. Here I'm adding some blue into the shadows just to remind myself to exaggerate the snow pattern I'm seeing. I think that'll make it a more interesting composition if I add just a little more of the, the blue snow in the shadows. Here I'm just throwing in a little bit of blue to remind myself that where the water is rippled it's reflecting the, the bright sky, bright blue sky. I'm also going to try to draw in some of the trunks of these closer birch trees where the sun's hitting them. Maybe a slightly smaller brush would help. Alright, there's the turpentine wash in. I'll go ahead and start mixing up the colors. Standing here in person, it looks like the sky is pretty close, except where it comes down toward the horizon. That's just a little that's just a little dark compared to what I'm seeing. I think I'll just leave the sky alone for now, leave it with the wash, and go straight into the, the colors for the mountain. I'm going to deliberately keep the colors on the mountain higher value. So this these shadows look a little dark. And how I can judge that is, if I look at the foreground, if I say look at where this fallen log is, and let my eyes kind of focus on that and check out the scene with my peripheral vision, the mountain needs to be higher value in my painting. It's jumping, the deep shadow 
here, this contrast is jumping forward too much. So as I mix the colors, I'm going to compare it to what I have on my panel and lighten the values just a bit. It'll help also when I put in these other colors as I add the greens and the tans, some more warmer values than what I have there now. That'll help even things out a bit, but I still think the I need to push down the value difference, the contrast. had that happen to me a couple times. It's pretty frustrating. I've got colors for the whole scene mixed up now. So I've got, I did go ahead and mix up some sky blues, a little darker, a little lighter. I've also got a little redder note just because I like to add a little splash of more warm red into the sky to make it vibrate a little bit. And I've got the shadows of the far hill, pretty high value. Then the, the rock face in the sun, I'll dip into the, the uh, sky colors also to lighten that even more if I need to or to tip it a little bit cooler. I've got some greens for the trees on the mountain in the sun and where the trees are in shade I'll just use the mountain shade colors. Then I've got some tree colors mixed up. As the scene becomes closer, the colors become richer. So I've got some of the scrub brush, really beautiful orange, red, tan colors. And the sun on the birch trees and the shadow of the, I'm not sure if those are birch trees, the, those deciduous trees. I'll use these also to mark out the limbs up in the sky and against the mountain. I'll use some of these colors as well for the distant, the far bank deciduous trees. And these are some colors for the bank of the river, just some different warm and cool grays. I'll use the these mountain colors for the water. I'll just dab those in and kind of blend them a bit and mush them around a bit to create a, a rough reflection of the mountain in the water. And I have some colors for the, the pine trees on that distant bank but not quite as far back as the, the trees on the mountain. As, they, as those pine trees come closer they get warmer so I added more cad red and cad yellow into that mix to warm it up. I use this large evergreen flats, number seven maybe three quarters of an inch wide. Dip in a little bit of Damsol to help the paint slide off the brush. And I'll start by painting the lighter value sky closer to the mountain. Adjust the shape of the mountain as I go. dip into some of this yellow tan for down near the horizon where the sky is a little more yellow, a little lighter.
of pre-mixing my oil colors. I often spend more time mixing the colors to match the scene than actually putting brush to panel. I find pre-mixing the colors helps me in a number of ways. It helps me to capture the colors in a short amount of time before the light changes. It also helps me to keep the values compressed, meaning I can group the colors by value within just a few value families and then shift the color warmer or cooler within that value. I'm not quite sure where I first heard about that. It's, I think, popular in a lot of schools of painting and it can really help make a stronger composition and a more interesting painting. It also helps me to keep my colors cleaner by consciously restricting myself to just a few colors per mix. I find if I mix as I go with my brush that I'm a lot more likely to create muddy colors. This is just my approach. There are many other approaches out there. I start with the background and work forward and down. This helps me to keep mostly soft edges. I like keeping the edges soft because I can always go back later in the studio and add a hard edge here and there to bump up the interest. Lately I've been trying to follow John Singer Sargent's approach. Apply the middle value first, then apply the dark, then apply the light, and finally apply the light and dark accents. where it ended up. Had a lot of fun. Beautiful day to be outside spending a few hours beside the river. It's a little bit of road noise here but not too bad. Pretty happy with how it turned out. I do like the glow of the snow I added in the shadow areas. I think that's interesting against the, the brighter more vibrant greens. And I do think the closer pine trees stand out against the distant pine trees. I may cool those distant pines on the mountain just a little bit to make them sink back a little. They're kind of jumping forward. I'll, I'll take a look at it in the studio, see what it needs to finish it up. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. As you can see here, I've got quite a lot of beautiful paint mixed up, just right for the scene, the colors that I mixed here today. So I'll scrape these off and place them on my Day Tripper palette here and close the lid on top, which will protect it in my backpack. And then I'll have these at home when I want to finish this painting.